Daring Junior High School will soon be no more. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. And our top story, the Gehring School Board met this week during a special meeting and decided to officially change the name of Gehring Junior High School to Gehring Middle School. Superintendent Dr. Nicole Reagan says change in name did not occur when sixth grade was moved into the junior high school, but it is happening now. So uh, middle school has a different concept um, philosophically than the high school, junior high school. And so um, as you can see, there's not a lot of middle junior high schools in the state of Nebraska anymore. And since we moved the sixth grade over to the junior high, it's really time to call it what it is and it is a middle school. The change will take a year to implement and will include mostly legal work as well as new signage and letterhead. Well, a piece of regional history now has a new home after sitting on the top of the Wildcat Hills for more than two decades. Last week, a house moving specialty company from Grant, Nebraska, started the process of removing the Warner cabin from a hillside on the north side of the Gaiman Park's shooting complex and delivered it to the Legacy of the Plains Museum. Museum Executive Director Dave Wolf says it was a culmination of a long process for a structure believed to be more than a century old. We believe it was uh, originally an 1870s Bay State bunkhouse, uh, and that's how we're going to kind of exhibit it. Uh, but we're it's just another attraction. We hope we can get people off the road. Uh, but it's been kind of a five year process to get it down there. Since the opening of the shooting complex, the cabin has been closed for reasons of public safety. Wolf says a restoration expert from Wyoming fell in love with the structure during an examination of it and says that restoration will be fairly easy, with the biggest part being installation of a new roof. We'll have more news right after this. Swipe right, swipe left, endlessly searching. Finding the perfect match isn't always perfect, but it can be when it comes to finances. Nora found the perfect business loan. Jenny opened her first savings account. Grammy loves her checking account. We found a match for Wilson Farms. The Sandersons were matched with a mortgage. Regardless of your financial situation, Platte Valley Bank will match you with the perfect solution. Find your match at Platte Valley Bank. back. A 39-year-old Scotsman man has been sentenced to more than a year in jail and lost his driving privileges for the next 15 years stemming from his October drunk driving arrest. Stephen Lockman was sentenced on Friday in district court after pleading no contest to DUI more than 0.15 BAC third offense as well as a conviction of assault on an officer. When he was first arrested, Lockman resisted arrest and bit one of the arresting officers before being taken to the hospital for a blood draw. District Judge Leo Dobervonli sentenced Lockman to one year in jail for the DUI with 153 days credit for time already served, 90 days on the assault charge, and revocation of his motor vehicle operator's license for 15 years. Well, Rural Prosperity Nebraska will kick off the 10th season of its Rural Fellows Internship Program next month. 21 students will live in 10 rural communities across the state, working on community development projects that range from public health to downtown creative arts districts. This year, rural fellows will be in Shadron, Box Butte County, Sydney, and Scotch Bluff. The Rural Fellows Program places university students in Nebraska communities for seven weeks each summer to work with local leaders on community-designed projects. While most students are enrolled at one of the University of Nebraska institutions, this summer, two come from out of state. And University of Nebraska President Ted Carter has announced that Dr. Rodney Bennett has been named the priority candidate to become the next chancellor of University of Nebraska-Lincoln. 
As required by state law, Bennett's candidacy now undergoes a 30-day vetting period, during which will be a series of public sessions during which members of the university community and the news media can meet Bennett and ask questions. At the conclusion of the vetting period, if Carter deems appropriate, he will bring Bennett's candidacy to the Board of Regents at its June 22nd meeting for consideration. This is KNEB.TV weather from the KNEB Storm Center, your trusted source for weather. All in all, not a bad looking evening out there. We're going to see some isolated storms, otherwise partly cloudy skies. We'll turn cloudy overnight, though, and into early tomorrow morning with the weather pattern kind of stuck and going to continue for the next several days. Uh, near daily thunderstorm chances, heavy rain is possible at times. Generally speaking, just seasonal temperatures expected out there. Yesterday, right about normal, 78 after a morning low of 54. As far as uh, precip goes, nothing new in the rain gauge. We're three inches above normal for the month, two inches above normal for the year. And another day today of uh, near to slightly above normal temperatures and another day of no precip. We've now gone a uh, full week without any precip here in Scott's Bluff. But that's changing. More thunderstorm chances are coming tomorrow, Saturday. Slightly lesser chances uh, Monday, Tuesday before things pick back up Wednesday, Thursday of next week. Winds are going to be gusty to breezy, windy at times tomorrow and into Saturday. Then winds will come down a bit as we go into early next week. Severe weather look outlook for tonight is uh, mainly to the south of us again uh, with just general storms expected. Now tomorrow... There is a marginal risk of severe weather across our region and on Saturday as well. Not much changing as uh, things kind of holding in place. In the excessive rainfall, we've been watching this the last several days today into tomorrow and then on into Saturday and Sunday. We keep a chance of a marginal risk of excessive rain out here. That moves away as we go into Monday of next week. Temperatures are in the 70s and 80s across most of the region. Cooler in the south-central Nebraska where 60s are in place. Nearly 80 in Omaha and 66 in McCook. It looks like 67 Sydney and 69 in Kimball. 76 though in Shadron and Torrington. Winds are out of the southeast. Still gusty up to 30 miles an hour at times. So another gusty wind day going on. Futurecast shows a few thunderstorms out there tonight. They're going to be isolated. They're going to continue into the overnight hours in the Sand Hills. Now, tomorrow we reprime the pump. Much more thunderstorm coverage coming tomorrow here across the region into tomorrow night. And again, rinse and repeat as we go into Saturday after a break in the morning, Saturday afternoon and evening. We reset the stage for another round of scattered showers and thunderstorms out there. Heavy rain going to be the primary threat. Can't rule out some gusty winds and small hail. 50s overnight for lows. Highs tomorrow are, generally speaking, going to be in the 70s. Not much change out there. Precip and a couple, three waves over the next three days. Again, not everybody is going to be treated equally. And even these areas that are showing uh, the most, it may be in different areas. But right now, uh, anywhere from a couple of hundreds up to a couple of inches, not out of the question in some of the heavier cells. Isolated storms, otherwise partly cloudy early. Clouds increasing overnight, low of 58. Tomorrow, it's going to be windy. Uh, periods of thunderstorms later in the day. Gusty winds and hail are possible. 60% chance of uh, showers and storms tomorrow. Temperatures in the upper 70s. We'll even increase that to a 70% chance of showers and storms late tomorrow. We continue that uh, high chances into Saturday. They decrease a bit, especially Monday, Tuesday only to turn right back around and go up for Wednesday, Thursday of next week. And 
Not much deviation in temperatures, upper 70s and low 80s expected. Morrill County Community Hospital and the behavioral health providers are here to help. Amber Dean specializes in mental health care, which includes medication and therapy across a person's lifespan. Melody Lysi helps people deal with a wide range of behavioral problems, from depression and anxiety to child psychiatry. Our dedicated team is committed to you and our community every time. At Morrill County Community Hospital, Bridgeport, Nebraska. Exceptional care, right here at home. Now, sports from the FNBO Sports Desk. FNBO, the great big small bank. The high school sports year is in the books. The year-ending boys state golf championships wrapped up on Wednesday for Class B, C, and D kids from all around the region. Here in town at Monument Shadows in Gearing, it was the Class B State Tournament. Our own Trayton Harmon was on scene yesterday as the York Dukes wrapped up the team title with an eight-shot win over the Norris Titans. York head coach Dan Malik going out on top, retiring as the York coach after this state championship. Yeah, our five-man, um, Marshall McCarthy, he's a senior, um, went out early at 9 o'clock and posted the score for us and put everybody at ease. And the rest of the guys were all able to just be just be confident and play well and you know nobody fired a earth shattering round but everybody was just rock solid just very proud of them they're, they're great competitors they're great players and uh, I'm just very happy for them it's, it's, it's been a cool ride. On the individual leaderboard it was Trayton Bear of Beatrice winning the title on the second playoff hole over Travis Tilford from Norris. Both players posted two day scores of even par 144. Here's Bear talking about the key to his round yesterday. You know, putter definitely saved me. I had a, I had a really good hole out in the middle six fairway for birdie, ironically, and I made a really long par putt that kind of just kept the round going on one of the holes in the back nine. I think it was, um, at 14, it was a really good par putt. I it just kept the round going, so that's probably what clicked. A two-hole playoff to decide the title with emotions running high. I've been involved in a lot of playoffs in my time, a couple district ones, and nothing quite got the nerves rolling like all those people watching. I've had a lot, a lot of fans, but not a lot of, not a lot of fans, but a lot of people just out there watching. And you know, I like to try to put on a show for them, so I, I try to hit some good shots. But it was a, it was nervy. That's for sure. That's for sure. As for the top local competitors, the Scotts Bluff Bearcats finished in third place and had the top individual finisher from the region with Tommy Dredla coming in a tie for 12th at 10 over par along with Ogallala's Caleb Castillo. Cats head coach Brock Ayler after his team closed out their season with that top three finish. Good tournament. Um, kids settled in today and and you know we played pretty average both days but um, everybody got to use a score in to help everybody contribute to the team. Um, I thought our mentality was a lot better today um, from you learn a lot from a couple guys getting having some big numbers and then they got to fight their way back and and you can fight that way back the good mentality and, and come back or you can kind of lay down I think they competed for their team and played and and we kind of ended where you know we I thought we were a top five team and, and we finished third so that was good and, and I think the numbers where we are we're considerably just the third best team of the, the 48 and B. Another big success for the Scotts Bluff gearing joint effort to put on a great Golf State Championship Tournament here in western Nebraska. Elsewhere in golf yesterday, Mitchell's Kale Peters finished strong with a fourth place effort in Class C that was held in Columbus. Peters finishing at 11 shots over and six back of the champion from Kearney Catholic. Mitchell was 11th in the team standings. North Platte hosted Class D where Bridgeport finished 10th and it was Hemingford in 14th place in the team race. And summer all-star activity set to get underway this weekend with the annual Panhandle Prep Basketball Showcase Games. The girls and boys contest coming up tomorrow night. Those will be held at Scotts Bluff High School once again this year. Three-point and dunk contests included. And, of course, we'll have radio coverage myself with Jeff Kelly on 107.3 The Trail. That'll get underway with pregame tomorrow night 
at 515. That is the latest today from right here at the FNBO Sports Desk. I'm Chris Cottrell. Culture trumps everything else. In my years, I've never worked for a company that treats people the way this one does. It is my passion for agriculture that brought me here in the first place, but not only that, there's a huge uh, family-oriented atmosphere within the 21st century equipment. I love working for 21st. They found something in me that I didn't know in myself. An intern to where I'm at now is such a great opportunity, and that is what this company is about. Let's take a look at your community calendar brought to you by Riverstone Bank. The community calendar is brought to you by Riverstone Bank. We're local and we love our community. Renewal by Anderson. Enjoy the view again. There is nothing like that morning cup of coffee when you have Renewal by Anderson windows. Their exclusive Fibrex material is twice as strong as vinyl. The difference is huge. No more drafts, no more absurd heating or cooling bills, a quiet home, the outside noise is gone. Renewal by Anderson's incredible financing offer is here right now. No money down, no interest, no payments for a full year. Book your free estimate right now at rbawyoming.com. Enjoy the view again with Renewal by Anderson Windows. At Platte Valley Bank, we want to help you plan for tomorrow while you enjoy today. Our personalized trust services can help you do just that. You've worked hard to build your legacy, and you want to make sure that gets passed on for generations to come. We offer the professional guidance necessary to ensure that happens. According to your wishes, we pride ourselves in being friendly and professional while offering a highly tailored full line of trust and estate planning services to accommodate you. You belong here. And finally, tonight, May is Beef Month, and we here at KNB will be doing our part by hosting our annual barbecue tomorrow at our Scotch Love Station. Staff will be grilling up burgers and dogs for a sack lunch that also includes chips, cookies, and a drink, and all in return for a cash donation for Camp Scott to help local kids be able to attend this summer. KNB Promotions Director Kendra Feather says, in years past, it's been a picnic. But once COVID hit, we pivoted to a drive through option. Again, we enjoy doing this for the community. We always hope for good weather that day. But this drive through part has made it a lot better than us trying to set up tables. And <laughs> we'd love to sit down and chat with you. But this, um, and we've been able to raise a little bit more. So we ask for at least a minimum of $5 donation. Yeah. And if you want to do more, is great. If you want to give me a call and would like to do some for your business, we can have those ready for you. We'll be out there Friday starting at 11 a.m. 
and hopefully we'll have enough to feed the masses until at least 1 p.m. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. We'll see you here next time.